Hello, I'm Adam, and this is my tutorial video about how to use my repository um, called Parsimony. So uh, here we go. So first, let's find ourselves a directory in which to put it. So we're just going to copy this URL right here and get clone. So obviously, you need Git for this. Um, navigate into the repository, and now here we are. So let's let's uh, let's start making Turing machines. Um, so. To do that, we're going to navigate to the laconic directory. Um, oops, files. I'm going to fire up my favorite text editor, micro. Um, I'm going to open. Uh, so we're going to call. So the Turing machine that I'm going to make is going to be checking whether or not all square numbers are less than five. Uh, so it's a, a well-known conjecture, um, and we're going to see if it's true with a Turing machine. So we're we're going to make a Turing machine that checks the conjecture. So um, let's uh, call the, the file squares are small. And we're going to go, give it the dot .lack extension because all laconic files must end in dot .lack. All right. Um, let's uh, start with a comment explaining what our program is all about. And then uh, let's start making functions. So a function definition begins with func. Um, we're going to make a square function. The square function is going to take two arguments. It's going to perform that assignment, and then it's going to return. So note that my square function looks a little bit different than it might in other languages. Most languages, you probably have something like, you know, func square of x is return x times x. In laconic, um, things are a little different. There are no return values, but the inputs can be modified at will, and the, the modifications stick, regardless of the type of the input. So um, in this case, what's going what, what's to happen here is you're going to pass in x and y, and you're going to assign the value of y is not going to matter that you, you passed in, but you're going to you're going to change the value of y to x times x, and then you're going to return, and the the, the the modification you made to y is going to stick, and you're going to be able to use that value of y um, in the future. Uh, so you can sort of so technically both x and y are both inputs and outputs to this function, but we can sort of think of x as being the input uh, argument here, and y as being the output argument. Um, all right, so that's that's how functions work. I'm going to make one more function. This is a function you're probably going to find yourself making a lot if you write electronic programs. Inker of x is x equals x plus 1. And then you return, and that's that. All right, so now that we have the functions that we need, um, let's declare our variables. So we'll call them a and b. Um, a and b are going to be initialized to 0, because that's just how things work. And uh, they're both going to be signed integers with no limits on how big they can get. That's one of the nice things about having infinite memory. Um, <laughs> No limits on how big your integers can get. So we don't need to worry about that sort of thing. Um, and now we're going to say, OK, so while b is less than 5, we're going to do square of a, b. So in other words, we're going to, to square a and load the result into b. And then we're going to increment a. And because a is initialized to 0, so it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, and b is going to get loaded 0, 1, 4, 9, etc. So now we print b, and we halt. So this print statement, by the way, is uh, purely for debugging purposes. So when we interpret this program, it's going to matter because it's going to, it's going to print the value of b for us. But when we compile the program, I mean, you know, it's going to compile to a Turing machine, and a Turing machine can't print because you know, it, all it has is a tape. <laughs> so um, this this statement is going to be ignored in the final compiled Turing machine. But it's, it's good to have print statements for interpretation, just so that you can make sure that your program has the correct behavior. That's what print statements are for. Um, all right. Uh, so yeah, and so now we can save this, uh, and we can quit, um, yes, all right. And uh, now let's uh, run it. So when we want to run our program, we have to do it from the laconic meta directory. It's a little bit confusing. We're going to put the file in laconic files, but we're going to run it from laconic meta. Um, and laconic meta knows that we don't need to worry about the fact the file's not in the same directory. Look, the, 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 the programs here know to look in the laconic files directory for the program that we wrote. So we're going to say python laconic interpreter.py Squares are small. No extension. Um, oh, OK. It halted. OK, apparently con the conjecture is false, because yeah, I guess technically technically 9 is a square number, and it's more than 5. OK, so fair enough. Um, I guess we've found the, the conjecture. There's, there's a, a counterexample to conjecture. Um, so uh, that's good to know. It seems that our program behaved correctly, though. So. Now that we've checked that our program behaves correctly with the interpreter, I think we're ready to compile it. Um, so why don't we go ahead and do Python laconic to, so we're gonna, we're gonna compile this to a two symbol Turing machine, which is usually what people are interested in. We're gonna compile squares are small, once again, no extension. 
and here we go. Oh boy! All right, so it, it's printing a whole bunch of stuff. So that this is, you know, the the, the these are some statistics that, about the Turing machine that we're making. These are some uh, helper files that's importing in the T, at, at the TMD level. Um, it's not too important for now. We're just going to go straight to where the Turing machine is located, which is um, back in the SRC. We look here and we find that uh, there's three directories. We're going to go into the TM one, TM two because it's a two symbol uh, Turing machine, and then the two the TM two files. And now here it is. We have squares are small dot tm2. It wasn't there before. Um, let's have a look at what it looks like. All right, so it's a 4,758 Turing machine, state Turing machine. Um, these are what states look like. So this, 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 this right here is the name of the state. This is what it would do if it read an A. This is what it would do if it read a B. And so it's saying it would transition to this state. It would move the head right, and it would write an A on the tape. All right, so it's not too informative to just look at the Turing machine. But if we want to run it, um, what we want to do is we want to navigate to tm2 meta. And uh, we're going to want to do Python tm2 interpreter, um, sorry, tm2 simulator.py. Um, and then squares are small once again. Again, with no extension. So we sort of choose a name for the program, squares are small, and the extension changes based on where in the pipeline it's hanging out. But we always ignore the extension. The programs are smart enough to put it in for us. All right, so we're going to do this. Oh, wow, okay, and it's, it's just giving us all kind of, wow, okay, so yeah, um, we probably want to stop it because it's kind of hard to see what's going on there. Um, and we can run it again, this time with the, 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 the minus Q flag to tell it that we're not really interested in, in oops. <laughs> that was a typo. This time with the minus Q flag to tell it that we're not really interested in output. So um, now it's going to run. And eventually it's going to halt because uh, it's going to find that 9 is a counterexample to our, our conjecture and halt. But that could take a while because these Turing machines are optimized to have as few states as possible, um, not necessarily to be fast. So in fact, this is going to take two hours. Um, so I'm not going to wait for it. Instead, I'm just going to stop it. So unfortunately, uh, you guys didn't really get to see how the Turing machine looked like at the bottom level. Uh, it's sort of, you, you had all this stuff, which is hard to make sense of. Um, so if you, want, if you want to understand better what the compilation process is like, and what Turing machines look like is sort of in an intelligible, if, when, when they're put into an intelligible uh, uh, format, you should look, look at my next video. But this video is hopefully enough for you to get started uh, writing your own Turing machines. And if you don't care about what's going on in, in, on the inside, you don't need to look at my next video. All right, uh, thanks a lot.